Dude, I gotta tell you, I cannot express enough how terrible of a feeling it is to see in real time how differently a man treats you after you sleep with him. Like, the way that they treat you when they're trying to get you to sleep with them versus after you have slept with them. And just the sheer disregard they have for your feelings, for you as a person. I mean, what are you expecting? If this person's ultimate goal was just to have sex with you, then probably they didn't really want anything to do with you past that point, right? There is a thing called post-nut syndrome, and I think this probably roughly applies to women as well. I'm pretty sure I've heard multiple – I know women can, like, bust several times, right? Uh, and you could take, like, 45 minutes to just even do one thing. But, like, one you – know, guys usually are, like, one and done for the most part. But, yeah, there's a thing called post-nut clarity, and for most dudes, it's uh, – you know, like, we're not really thinking about sex post that interaction. Um, and our minds shift completely. I Like I said – I think women have this too, to a certain degree, but when a dude, when we bust, it's like, I'm not even thinking about that anymore. I'm thinking about like making lasagna or like pouring iced tea or something, or I don't know, grinding to the next level of my battle pass on Fortnite. Like I'm not thinking about sex anymore. It's literally like off and on. It's, there's no in between. And there might be some guys out there that will sit there and say, oh no, David, I can keep going. Of course you can keep going, but it's not going to be your A game. It's not going to be you at your, your, your most caveman, your, your most like, I'm in touch with nature type uh, type, type type attitude, right? Um, you're more or less just doing it because the other person wants to keep going and you're like, oh, I don't want to seem like an absolute bitch, so I'm going to like keep going or whatever, right? So um, you maybe go in the bathroom like, hold on, I got to go pee real quick. And you go in the bathroom, slap it up a little bit. I don't know, man, whatever. You're, you're, you're talking to yourself in the mirror. You're saying you're a real man. You could do it. And then you go back in. And maybe you're obsessing over things that probably shouldn't be obsessed over. Like, why am I looking at this girl's butthole? I know what this is. That's concerning to me because I know what this does. Um, or maybe you're having sex with a woman that has a buzz cut and you're thinking about how this woman with a buzz cut looks like your best friend from the back. And now you're thinking like, is this my best friend? And then you have to look down just to make sure, no, this is not my best friend. This is a solid woman right here with a vagina that has an egg sac and she just so happens to have a butthole and a buzz cut like my best friend. But – Maybe these are my problems, but most of the time, um, if you're just going to find somebody to have sex with, what are you expecting for that person to do? Uh, it's probably just going to be a one and done for them anyway. Did you, you, if you know that they want to have sex with you and that's all they want to do, you should probably be prioritizing the relationship then, right? Make them work for the vaginal, make them work, work for smelling your vagina. Um, instead of just like giving it away, I guess. Um, if you know, this is going to be an issue consistently, which it is. Like it is sickening. And also on top of that, like being fat and dealing with the ramifications of men when you're fat, like on top of all that, it's just never going to be on top of anything at that size, dude. Sickening, <laughs> sickening and traumatizing. Okay. Well, I get it. It's probably really, really sickening to be a woman in the dating market in general. I remember I was literally talking to a woman and she was like, oh, how many matches do you have in your dating profile? And I was like, I don't know, like 16. And she, I was like, how many do you have? She was like, oh, like 5,000. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? 5,000? She was like, yeah, I don't, like, there's so many. Like, they all like me. I have no idea what's even going on. Like, I have no idea who to pick from or not. It's crazy um, to be like a woman on these dating apps nowadays and having the like you have to really you have to really look through a lot of dudes and like shift through a lot of bullshit to even understand like who is and who is not genuine out of those groups but at least you have a lot of options right um but in terms of like dudes just wanting to have sex with you the majority of dudes just probably want to have sex with you they probably just want to smell your vagina that's why i say like if your ultimate goal is to find a relationship then probably don't have sex on the first date probably don't have sex on the second date maybe the third fourth date maybe you talk about it a little bit but like that sixth date if that guy's still around and you haven't you haven't had sex with him by that sixth date and by the way when i mean sex i'm not like strictly just talking about like vaginally i'm talking about like you putting your hand on his penis and vice versa um not your penis sorry if you're a woman maybe you don't have a penis but if you have a penis then i don't know um if he wants to stroke you off that's fine but it, it, i mean sexual stuff in general it's okay to talk about stuff it's okay to have that in the back line you know what i'm talking about like it's okay to bring up sexual conversations but um probably don't give it out until you know this is a genuine individual that's there for solidly you and not just for satisfaction of his own genitalia so i would always err on the side of waiting 
and taking your time because most of these dudes out here are willing to have sex with conditioner bottles and watermelons. So your vagina is always going to be a step above that. And if they can get to that, regardless of whether or not you're fat or not, it's going to be way better. And like I said, post not clarity is a thing. It will turn off. This guy will no longer think <laughs> he probably will think that you're awesome and amazing, but that's only if he already had those ideas in the back of his head besides the sex, if that makes any sense. So you should probably just wait ultimately to have sex with somebody. Like when you're fat, it can feel like you have two options. Either be completely physically unwanted or settle for somebody who can quote, look past your body end quote, or find somebody who has a very specific preference for it. And usually this becomes quickly a fetish for it. This is true. A lot of dudes in general, and I don't know if this really, I don't know exactly, right? I, I don't usually ask women if they like dating fatter men. Most women are pretty much okay with dating fatter guys only because women are really looking for the secondary features compared to men are really only looking for women that look good first and foremost and everything else is secondary so i wouldn't i only really know about like men in general right most men don't want to date fat women because being fat is like detrimental upon your frame in general like it's a health risk by like you're literally multiplying your health risk by like a hundred every single day like you're, if anything were to go wrong with your body today times that by like a hundred or even more depending on how fat you are it's just not attractive like why would i want to be with somebody that's like on death's door consistently ringing that doorbell cam and god's behind it waving at you like i'm not trying to do that shit i don't want to date somebody that has to i have to, the constant looming of this person's uh ultimate death above my head or maybe whether or not their knees are going to be crinkling when they get up from the dinner table i have to come they're going to complain about the fact that you know they oh the this chair has armrests at this restaurant so we can't go into this restaurant uh okay well then fucking leave bro catch an uber back home oh sorry you can't catch an uber because the ubers don't actually have elongated uh belts anymore right the fucking big giant you need like the the belt extenders seat belt extenders to ensure that you can actually fit into these things so you can't even get an uber anymore so it's just like no benefit to dating anybody fat in general i mean sure if you're into it and you're like a feeder or you're like somebody that really really likes having sex with fat women folds great i'm sure you like it dude that's awesome i'm so glad that you can find a fetish in things that are just extraordinarily disgusting and weird um i'm, I'm glad that you like to put your penis in between grease folds that's awesome for you but for the majority of human beings it's just not very satisfactual I'd prefer to date somebody that's probably average or in shape because that at least tells me that you can take care of yourself, right? At least you have the ability to, um, you know, look at yourself in a critical way and determine that health is beneficial. Now, you can have a preference for bigger bodies without having a fetish, but a lot of people do not acknowledge that because fat bodies are outside the norm and therefore, like, any preference for something outside the norm is seen as kind of, like, disgusting and weird and abject. It's just not normal. Like, you can have a preference for sucking on toes, but it's not normal. You can have a preference for putting your foot in somebody's vagina. I know these are weird things to point out, but um they're not like out they're not so far out of the norm but they're also things that are definitely not going to be normalized like not many people do it but it's okay that you have these things but when it comes to being fat it's literally just a detriment so if somebody wants to date you while you're fat unless they're willing to help you um shrink your body or try to get you in a healthier um body body size which in my opinion is not really plausible for a lot of people like why would i knowingly go into a relationship with somebody that is very 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 overweight with the idea of like reducing their sizes when i could just date somebody that's already reduced in size this just doesn't make sense why would i want to do like a work in progress dude i i, I would prefer if you already had it down pack right i mean there are plenty of people out there plenty of women plenty of men that are perfectly um amazing people already and i understand that a lot of people will sit there and say oh no but i have great character traits david i'm, I'm funny i'm charismatic i have all these yeah i'm sure you do but like everybody already thinks that about them themselves um and then also uh so what there are plenty of people out there that are already those things and thinner so why would i put up with you being fat and literally something i don't enjoy looking at um that makes me unattracted to you it's just not plausible for a lot of people so it is um 100 outside the norm and that's the reason why people don't like it it's just not and there's a reason why it's outside the norm uh, these people have a tendency of not thinking about why it's outside the norm, though. They just kind of go like, oh, they just don't like fat bodies because they think it's un unattractive. Yeah, we do think it's unattractive, but it's also, like, ridiculously unhealthy, like, to a different degree. Like, any preference for something outside the norm is seen as kind of, like, disgusting and weird and abject. And that's not true. Um, that's really not true. Some people, like, for instance, um, suck in toes. A lot of black guys I know suck toes. And if I've ever asked a woman before, hey, are you down to have your toes sucked by a man? Most women are like, um... 
I mean, like, it's weird, but, like, if he wants to suck my toes, I don't care. That's, like, every single time. I've never met a woman that's like, ew, whoa, no. Why wouldn't you want to have your toes sucked? It's not like it's actually bad for you. Um, you're just, I mean, might be a little bit wet on your toes, but, like, go rinse it off in, like, the, the shower or something like that. Like, put some Dove Plus Care on there, and you're good. It's fine, dude. And plus, this guy probably brushes his teeth anyway. Hopefully, he's sucking on your toes uh, post-shower anyway. Hopefully, he's not sucking on your toes when you just got out of the gym and your shits are fermented. You got the bunions on the side. Hopefully, that's not what you have, but... If it is, even that's not even that weird. Like, it's totally fine, right? I mean, I literally knew a woman that told me to wear her vagina like a Reebok. And, uh, by the way, if we're going to identify our vaginas as any shoes, why Reeboks? Reeboks are, like, the lowest quality shoe. It's fine, though. Like, people wear them, but they're known for wear and tear. So, I mean, I wouldn't want to... Can we have something else? Like, maybe, like, a red bottom? Like, wear my shoe like a red bottom? But then again, I'm a dude, so I don't know. Maybe, like, Jordan's, like, threes? I don't know, man. Whatever. The point I'm making is... um. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have a fetish or, like, a kink. Uh, it, it just, it's just different. It's just different. Nobody's, like, looking at somebody sucking toes like, Ew, you're gross. Nobody's doing that, dude. Come on. Stop it. That's not true. And therefore a fetish. But I digress. I was told since I was a kid that I just had to find the people who specifically were into fat girls. That's bad advice. It, the, the better advice would be to get into a more stable size to where majority of people will find it attractive. You don't have to be the most attractive, but you should... You should be trying to uh, you should be trying to attract as many people as possible within the facilities that you have, and you are obviously an able-bodied individual, so I see no reason why you couldn't do that. And majority of the reasons, um, the majority of how you would lose weight would just be diet anyway. So yeah, just lose weight, and then find and people will find you more attractive. Not who were specifically into me, but who specifically were into people who look like me, who have my body type. I feel like a lot of people don't realize this, but um. A lot of people nowadays don't seem to realize that first impressions really, really matter. And when I mean first impressions, I mean physically. You can make a good first impression verbally and the aura you present, the energy and things such and so forth. The way the people view you in the world, that stuff's really, really important, right? But ultimately, if you don't look good to that other person, it's not going to be very good for you. So when people say like, oh, he just has to like my body type. Yeah, no shit. Like there's a like the majority of people that like like particular cars like the car because of the way they look, right? I mean, sure, there are other things to it, but most people are buying cars that they think they like, they, they want to look at. So, and of course, there are other things to it too. But um, it, it, when it comes to your body, yeah, they want to look at something that they find attractive, of course. Yeah. Why is that even weird? Like, of course. Yeah, but who specifically were into people who look like me who have my body type and I really never liked this because it feels like you're being reduced to your body type either way. I that is true. You are being reduced to your body type either way but the difference is at least you're appealing to a wider amount of individuals right so like if you're just fat and dudes are just really only into you because you're fat right then you have literally quite literally took took that that big giant funnel and you were at the end now you only have like five people going into that funnel instead of like thousands of people going into that funnel uh sure you could find a quality man sure you could find a guy that is going to definitely love you and care for you and all this other stuff but uh it's probably not going to work out because if that guy likes you for being fat then he's probably not going to encourage you to lose any weight which is not good because being fat is literally just a negative across the board so if you're interested in um dating a man that doesn't care about you being fat it's probably a detriment it's probably not a good thing but it's, it's not a big deal um, if somebody thinks that they like the way that you look physically across all the boards. Like, oh, yeah, I know, I know so many guys that are like, oh, man, doll. Yeah, man, I want a girl that got butt cheeks, man. Big domesticated butt cheeks, front butt too, man. I need them big titties, right? I see that a lot. But um, that's their type. That's what they want to do. But ultimately, like, as long as it's, like, around that area for, like, how a woman ought to look then it's probably fine for them. Like, most of the guys are not, like, dismissing women because their foreheads are, like, on the back of their necks or their wigs are applied directly on their eyebrows or their butt cheeks are slightly not big enough. Like, most of these guys are fine. Like, most people are totally fine. Um, I know a lot of people have, like, really unrealistic standards nowadays, but I, I really think most standards nowadays are just kind of bullshit. Like, most people are willing to forgive them um, if the right person comes along and they are roughly what they're looking for. Either somebody doesn't want you because of your body type, but everything else about you is so great, or they do want you because of your body type and nothing else about you matters. And that really bothered me because it is not the type of love I've ever wanted or was looking for. Nobody wants that love. Like, nobody wants one or the other. Nobody wants somebody to, like, only love them because <laughs> because of what they bring to the table mentally. Um, and they're, like, good in conversation and stuff like that, but they're fucking musty to look at. Or somebody that's only good looking and they bring nothing else to the table mentally. That's not good either way. I know there are a lot of people out there that like that, though. Uh, I've met a lot of dudes that are like, yeah, man, I don't want a girl to even know how to read, dog. I want a girl to forget how to talk. I've heard that before. 
And I've heard some women say that before, but usually it's the other end. Usually it's like they're dating dudes that are like tend to be a little bit smarter, but they're kind of musty in the face. So it's like one or the other usually. But in those scenarios, I feel like you should probably find the person that you're talking to attractive. They don't have to be the most attractive, but they have to be attractive for you physically. So that's always beneficial. And then also you should probably want somebody that's at least um, worked on themselves mentally, that's thought about a few things, because it's incredibly boring to be in a relationship with somebody that doesn't have a thought process that like they don't think about things or like they don't have like good conversations. They're just kind of like bricks. Um, you could do that with anybody. Like what, you know what I'm talking about? Like I just talked to chat GBT for five hours and have that be the conversation. Why would I want to date you then? You know what I'm talking about? Like you have nothing. So I don't know. Um, but there are a lot of guys out there that do like, like really pretty women that have no mental capacity, which is fine for them. It couldn't be me. And unfortunately, when you get on an app that's specifically for plus sized people, you're not getting the people who like don't care about body type, which they exist. No, yeah, one but those are red flags as well. If you date somebody that doesn't care about body type, that just tells me that they don't have standards and or they don't care, which is not good either way. And tells you this, but they do. You're getting the people who like really specifically have a preference for fat people. And sometimes those people are still nice and great. But often those people are going to be very dehumanizing. They're going to approach you in a very sexually forward way as like a person who will be willing to fulfill their kink or their fetish. Yeah. And they will treat you as this kind of like weird fetish object. So that Yep, that makes sense. You're going on an app specifically designed like Woo Plus, right? If you're going on an app specifically, specifically designed for plus size women, Yes. Why would you expect anything other than that? That's exactly what I would expect. When it gets to this place where your choices are either dehumanized for your body good or- Or you could just lose weight and just not have this be an issue to begin with. That's really what it comes down to nowadays. I understand that you think that being plus size is like your identity or whatever the fuck, but you do- I don't think people really understand this, okay? Uh, or maybe these people don't understand this. I feel like majority of people understand this, but like being obese in general- is such a detriment to your health. It's like you're literally just casually walking around with three or four times more pressure on your body at any given point in time. It's l quite literally just taxing you every single day for no other reason than just having the weight on your body. Even if you ate your shit diet right now, like which made you obese, but you weren't obese, that would be by like a thousand metrics way better because the weight on your body alone is so incredibly just dis destructive to you that... Um, the diet in itself is like it's it's obviously not good to have a bad diet. But if you have a bad diet, but you're in a good you're in a good healthy body size, that's like way better than having both of those things occur. It actually would be better. It would actually be worse also if you had like a really really obese diet. Sorry, a really obese body and like a really good diet. In my opinion, like I, the body is just like, like it's such a priority because you have to live in that. You have to make it work for what you have to do, right? Not many people have a choice in that. You have to do certain things sometimes. And if your body is not adequate for that particular thing, you're just going to struggle or just can't do it in general. That sucks. So I would always, always, always recommend people to just lose weight. It's such it's such a detriment to be fat. Um, but these people just don't seem to realize that for some reason. Or they just don't want to talk about it because they know if they do, it's going to be like, I don't know, a wake-up call. And they don't want to confront the fears because <laughs> confronting fears is not worth it for them. Which is terrible, by the way. You should be confronting your fears. That's what they always tell you, right? Like, if you want to actually grow as a human being, it's not just, like, avoid the problem completely. Um, which could probably fix the problem for you. But if it's something that's, like, okay. If you don't know how to swim and your fear is, I don't know how to swim, I might die, that can work for a really long time because how many times are you going to a pool of water and you might die? Not many times, right? Um, same thing with heights. You probably don't, not in many positions where you're looking down off a side of a building thinking that you might die because you might fall off that building. But in these scenarios, not confronting your fears when it comes to weight, um, that's the thing you're gonna have to deal with every single day. You're gonna be confronted with that every single day. Like you wake up, you go to the bathroom, you're gonna look at yourself, you're gonna see the gut, you're gonna see the massiveness of your stomach, you're gonna see the 19 inch belly button deep long thing that you have, right? You're gonna see the grease, you're gonna see the tuna fish off the side of your neck from the, from the residue that missed your mouth the night before. You're gonna see all of that every single day. When you walk up those stairs and your knees start hurting, when you walk down the street and your ankles are burning cr cr crazily, right? You're gonna see it all the time. So it's not plausible to not confront your fears here and not talk about it because these things are gonna consistently pop up.
not but not like the way it would have if you just can't swim because you're not going to be in a pool of water very often Fish object so then it gets to this place where your choices are either dehumanized for your body good or dehumanized for your body bad so it's very interesting that it doesn't need to be bad way. she just lose weight like no matter whether it's determining who you can date or who you can't date your body is the most important thing about you it's not the it just depends on what you mean by the most important it could be the most important thing about you it's going to be the thing that carries you through the majority of your for i would hope your whole life so it would be very beneficial for you to have a good sized body that's going to ensure that you don't have to worry about the negative effects of obesity that would be very very beneficial for most people so uh a lot of people will look at the body size and think it's very important because obviously it is and i think it's really interesting that like the number one response to i'm plus size and like i'm having a hard time dating or like i'm judged as unattractive by more people or i'm treated worse because i'm not attracted to people the response is go find some people who are very specifically attracted to only your body or lose rather weight. than people who are going to dehumanize you because of your body in one way go find people who are going to dehumanize you because of how much they like your body just lose weight and this won't be an issue to begin with i don't even understand why this is even a talking point just lose weight and not you as a person so i do get a lot of messages from women in just my lose weight right just lose weight that would be the ultimate way inbox who asked me if i really don't like um her head shape and these glasses i don't like them i don't know there's something about it pisses me off dating would have messages from women in my inbox who asked me if dating would be harder dating successful high caliber men would be harder for them since they are plus size or chunky and why would this not be an issue if you want to date a high quality man or a high value man which i'm guessing by some metric that means a guy that makes a lot of money, a guy that is working consistently, which is fine if you want to date a um, if you want to date a guy that makes a lot of money and is like you know a, a, a high earning man, that's fine. I have no issue with people dating high earning mans. But I want to I want to stress something, okay? If you date this high earning man, okay, do you realize that that guy's gonna be working like literally all the time? Like you do realize that guy's not gonna have any time for you. If that's okay for you, then that's fine. Like if you're okay with like sitting at home or like doing your own thing, and then he comes home every once in a while um and hugs and kisses you and maybe you have sex and eat food every once in a while but he's leaving for like the majority of the day and comes back maybe he's not even there every single day um is that like not okay is that is that a problem for you this is something that you gotta think about because a lot of people don't realize like you might be dating a guy that makes 50 or 60k a year but he's there for you he, he has time for you you can go on dates he can maybe take care of kids with you maybe you can do all that stuff right but a guy that's making 80 90 100 200k a year that guy might be working a lot and he might be doing that all the time and I'm not saying that you're not a strong, independent, powerful woman and you can't take care of the stuff yourself, but a lot of people value companionship. A lot of people value the person next to them. A lot of people need that person. And if you're not that person that can deal with that by yourself, then it probably wouldn't be beneficial. Now, this is, of course, given that the guy that is making a lot of money, there are some guys that are making a lot of money that have a lot of free time, which is very few and far between, in my opinion. A lot of guys that are making a lot of that money are working quite a bit. So if you're okay with that, then fine. But most people are not okay with that. Most people want the other person next to them. But um, yeah, of course, if you're fat, um, no matter what, it's going to negatively affect you. It's obvious. That's fucking, in general, it's going to negatively affect you. But of course, like these top echelon dudes, um, they can choose whatever they want, right? Like women want these guys consistently um, because they have a lot of money or resources or whatever. And I know it's going to sound like really sexist or whatever, but it's true. Like there's a reason why she's getting hit up by women that want high value earning men. Um, money is important. Money is very, very important. It's a, it's a good quality to have. So I, I don't even hate on women that want money. It's fine, dude. Like, it's, it, if that's what you want, that's what you want, dude. I'm sure you have your reasons. Over men would be harder for them since they are plus size or chunky. And to keep it really short and sweet, yes, dating is going to be harder for you if you of course are chunky or plus size. It's honestly because when a man is of a certain success, he starts to prioritize health and fitness. Most men who do have means do not want a chunky lady. They don't want a plus size lady. You girls know me. I'm not going to come on here and lie to any of you in order to spare feelings. Me lying to you and telling you, listen, you could be 300 pounds, you could be 400 pounds and don't worry. The doctors and the lawyers and the engineers want you. No, I'd be lying to you. True, uh, definitely, dude. That's a factual statement. Um, if I'm gonna date you for a long period of time, if I'm looking at you as a potential candidate for the rest of my life, then I hope that you have the health to sustain that lifestyle, bro. Like, what if we, I don't know, get married? Are you going to be able to, like, live through that marriage? What if we have kids? Are you going to be able to help me, like, raise our children? Are you going to die when you're 44 um, because your fucking heart gave out because your body had to literally power through literal decades of your life um, at five times higher weight than you needed to be, but you just like, kept that weight because it was convenient? 
Um, are you going to be able to, like, live into long aging? Like, I don't know, bro. This stuff is, like, really important for most people. And even the, the damages that you're doing to your body right now are going to be really, really bad. So I would always stress to the fact that losing weight is always going to be beneficial no matter what the situation is. Like, uh, uh, unless you're already thin. If you're on Eugenia Cooney status, then don't lose weight. You're good. You're <laughs> gained weight, obviously. Um, but if you need to lose weight, then do it. These men may even be a little bit heavy themselves, and yet they still do not want a heavy woman. When you are chunky, when you are of a bigger size, there will always be negative stereotypes that will accompany you. First and foremost, most people, men and women, will always think that you are lazy and undisciplined. True, that's a fact. Um, even if you're taking like Ozempic or like drugs and things such and so forth, at least you have the ability to do something for yourself that is going to, you know, discipline to one degree or another. Um, but fuck it. Like even if people say like if, even if it has less to do with um, even if it has less to do with discipline, it's about your fucking body. Like, do I give a fuck that I'm taking a drug that's going to like make my health drastically better? Like, fuck it, dude. I'm taking like what the fuck, dude? I, yeah, I don't have the discipline, but fuck it. At least I have the ability to like take a drug that can make my life substantially better. Of course, it's a cheat code um, to one degree or another, but at least I'm doing it like fuck off me. Right. I don't care if people take old because if it's good for their health. But um yeah definitely people are gonna look at you at like lesser than that's a fact health is wealth not only do you need to get in shape so that you can attract better men and have a larger dating pool but you also need to be healthy in order to sustain that type of activity in general money is literally useless if you're gonna die at 35 but your health is important you want to live long please do not listen to the woman who come on here telling you that it is okay to be plus size you are beautiful the way you are you are still going to attract great amazing this filter is not working on her right now i'm seeing it like clipping being successful men being 300 pounds being 400 pounds uh, those women are lying to you those women who tell you that would never want to walk a day in your shoes. True, that's a factual statement. Most of those women, unless they're already fat, are living a lie, a facade. These women are like big illusions. Um, a lot of them do believe what they're actually saying though, um, or they are grifting, which either way is not good. They would never want to be of your size. Women like to lie to other women to spare feelings, but sparing feelings is not what's going to help you. Your dating pool is so small when you're big, and why would you want that? You want to maximize your dating pool. You want to have as many options as possible. True. Now, if you like being big, if you like being plus size, you do you. But please do not come on here crying and moaning about how the men that you want don't want you. As he like did. True, you reap what you sow. Uh, obviously, you can't. You can't be upset that you're plus size and you're not getting options. She's right. Um, which is basically. I mean, she just basically says everything I say anyway. I want a second date. I was like oh he must think i'm fat it's dinner time and i picked up air Juan on the way home let's sit down and eat together got a hot plate because it's dinner time so i got chicken tenders brussels and potatoes the tender sauce is so good mac and cheese great awesome. they changed their mac and cheese since last time i was there try that first mm. don't care about the mac and cheese it's like a white cheddar mac cool. and cheese awesome. so it's like super Tell rich about the date. it does taste a little bit different don't care. so really good don't favorite care. drink brand this is the only good flavor also got some snacky stuff that we'll try at the end the chicken sauce is like dude this is about a date right why are we talking about the food don't care really similar to like canes if you ever had that before canes is just really really in my opinion it's like really sweaty ketchup and that's what i look at cane sauce as just really salty deteriorated ketchup and i know a lot of people like cane sauce i think you're weird if you like cane sauce bro i don't care i feel like i would get more seasoning from licking the back of a back a black man than i would be uh e e eating the cane sauce i might as well just go to the grocery store and just get some ketchup and spray some salt in it or so good it's just a chicken tender like i don't know why people pay so much money for chicken tenders when you can just go to the go to your local stop -a shop and just get some for like for, i don't know what eight dollars for a, a giant bag you're good dude it's the same shit you know the girl who does like sausage and mustard mm. whatever well, on a date care. one time I remember wearing these pants that were like tighter than normal, like a skinny jean because that was like in at the time. I still wear skinny jeans. People hate on the fact that I wear skinny jeans, but I like having my legs look like legs. I'm going back and forth. I'm like, not like tight though. Like they kind of like drift off. Like I'm not wearing, like you can't see my sphincter. Like you can't see what I ate yesterday. Like they're not that tight. I used to wear them that tight, um, but I don't wear those tight jeans anymore. But then again, all my jeans right now are literally all ripped, so I need to get new pants anyway. So maybe I'll change my style. Maybe I'll have, like, a more, like, actual real, like, you know, gentleman style. I don't know. Whatever. Should I wear a longer top? 
or a shorter top. But I liked how the shorter top looked best. So I like hyped myself up. I'm like, I had met this guy one time before. I had planned to like take me out to lunch and then we were gonna like do homework together because I was in college. After we ate, he like made up some excuse why he like needed to go home. So I was like, okay. I gotta go take a shit. Sorry, I only shit in my own bathroom. Your bathroom looks musty anyway. I gotta go home. Weird. I wonder what the was excuse like was, dude. I think the excuse really does matter because depending on what the excuse is, he's putting in more or less effort to make that excuse, right? So if he's putting in more effort, then I'm probably thinking, um, then he probably cares about me to one degree or another and something's actually going on. But if it's like a less excuse and he probably just doesn't give a fuck about me in general. Like if the guy was like, oh no, my grandmother died again. I gotta go. Oh, I gotta go. Sorry. But if the guy's like, yeah, genuinely, like I, I can't take a shit in anybody else's bathroom besides my own. My bubble gut is like going through the roof right now. Then I'd be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like dropped me off and texted me like, this isn't gonna work out. True. And I literally thought that it was because I he saw my stomach in the jeans. Damn. And like thought I was fat. And maybe that was his reason. I don't really know why it didn't go well. I just want to like, I don't know. I wish I could go back and be like, if he liked you, it wouldn't have matter what shirt you wore. Yes, it would have. What are you talking about? If you came in and you had like the Krusty the Clown shirt and had like residue from the last five things that you ate on it and you smell like body odor, it does matter. I don't know why these people are so, I don't know why people nowadays think that physical appearance doesn't matter at all. It only doesn't matter if you're blind, and even then it matters. So, no, it's no. You need to present correctly if you, like, whenever you watch dating shows, right? Uh, one thing I've noticed tremendously, and one thing I've noticed actually, too, when it comes to a game, like, there's this game called Red Dead Redemption 2, right? And you could play as this character called Arthur Morgan. Very handsome man. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that whenever I see guys doing playthroughs as this game i see dudes are playing as this character who's very attractive by the way um they always make him bald they always give him like the biggest most fucking crazy beard you ever seen in your life they always make him dress in like overalls and and like you know beat up shoes and stuff like that because it's funny them like oh i'm playing as arthur morgan and he looks like a fucking homeless a homeless guy that's missing teeth in the cutscenes and stuff like that but one thing i noticed is that when women play the video game they always give him a nice haircut they always have him clean shaven they always have him wearing very very nice suits and ties and they always give him nice shoes and they always give him the best decisions because you know what that's important for a lot of women a lot of women want you to be clean a lot of women want you to dress well a lot of women want you to wear clothes that fit you a lot of women want you to take care of yourself and um i feel like a lot of guys don't realize that if you do simple things like that you're literally putting yourself at like the top echelon of men just simply there and these things also apply to men to a one degree or another maybe less depending on the sensitivity but it's always going to apply across the board. So if you're a woman and you want to impress a man, you should probably wear clothes that fit, naturally. You should wear clothes that accentuate your form, naturally. You should have a good skincare routine. You should be able to take care of your hair if you have it. You should uh, wear all that stuff that, you know, all this stuff is key indicators um, that a lot of people will look at. And the same thing could be said with your body size. Like if you're fatter, people are going to look at that and go, you don't, you, like even though you dress well, you don't take care of yourself. And that's really important for a lot of people. So I understand that for a lot of people, you want to sit there and you want to say like, no, they shouldn't care about what I look like. That's bullshit. We don't live in that fucking world. Where do you exist where anybody doesn't look at what you look like? You're fucking crazy, bro. You're going to show up to a job interview musty as hell? No, you're not. You're going to wear your best outfit. So stop acting like that's an anomaly. I don't know. I wish I could go back and be like, if he liked you, it wouldn't have matter what shirt you wore. Like, even if he didn't want a second date because he thought you were fat, he wasn't the one for you. It, it actually kind of hurts me a little bit when I see people that are eating food with dips and then they're wearing, like, acrylics or long nails. And I see the food dripping on the nails because I know you're not going to properly clean that off. I, it's just, it just kind of irks me, bro. Or what shirt like, you wore. Look at wore. it drip on her nails right like, there. Even if he you see? It's, like, dripping right on the nail, and I hate that shit so fucking tremendously. The only thing – oh, she's got a fucking thumb ring. What the fuck? The worst – that's, you're not supposed to put anything on the thumb, okay? We got to make a rule. First and foremost, if you ever wear any rings, never put them on the thumb. They look so weird. It looks like you're wearing a necklace on it, okay? It's too big. It's weird, too, all right? One thing I really hate is when I watch dudes that are doing cooking shows, and they're cooking foods, and they're seasoning it, and all this other stuff, but they got rings on. What the fuck are you doing, bro? That shit is getting up and under the ring. You know when you take that off, you can have people growing under your ring, right? So, yeah, whatever, bro. I just... He didn't want a second date because he thought you were fat. He wasn't the one for you. Now that That's fine. That's fine. She could say that. It's a dumb point, but fine. He doesn't like big women, but sure. I mean, we, we can externalize all our problems. Why I have not? my current boyfriend who loves me and treats me so well. And he doesn't care about the fact that you're fat and he's not, like, encouraging you to lose weight. Sounds like a shit boyfriend to me. I'm like, how silly of me to ever, like, be caught up on somebody. If you're a big girl and you're in the dating scene, here's some advice you're worried that he doesn't like you because of how big you are or he's not showing you to his friends and his family 
He's not the one for you. This woman is dumb. If a guy says that he doesn't like you because you're physically unattracted to him and your response to that is, well, you should like me exactly the way I am, you're fucking stupid. Um, you do realize, like, just having that weight on your body is going to neg- – like, when is when are these people going to realize that it's you're not the exception, okay? You are the rule. There's a reason why people are dismissing you outright because you're fat or they're not taking chances on you because you're fat. It's because you're fat, and that's not a good thing. Being overweight is such a negative in general, but go off, queen. Like, if you feel like you're a secret or – your gut tells you, like, women's intuition tells you everything you need to know. So- I don't think this has anything to do with intuition. This literally, like, if, if this is happening consistently like this, bro, then you're probably because you're, you know, fat or whatever, dude. If multiple dudes are like, yeah, I'm just not really attracted to fat women, and you're, like, deducing that, like, oh, you know, my intuition is telling me that these guys don't like me because I'm fat. Yeah, no fucking shit. No shit, bro. That shit's literally choreographed. So listen to your gut. Okay, and I got You to- should not be listening to your gut, especially here. This woman is literally body slamming. Like, I don't even know how many calories this is here, bro. This 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 cake alone's got to be like 500. Sweets. So this is overnight oats. Okay, not overnight oats. I thought it was cake or something. This is one of my favorite things from Erwan. It's like uh, chia. I would love to. I would love to know what she like. You're in a relationship now with your boyfriend, and I'm sure you love him, and he's great and awesome and fantastic. Does he not ever like look at your body and go, babe? Babe, why are you so fat? Maybe, like, I'm trying to be with you for, like, a long time, right? So, like, why don't you try to lose weight so that way me and you could be, like, together forever? But he's not saying that to you? That's a red flag. That's a bad thing. That guy's literally, like, enabling you to stay at your overweight body size. But you've somehow managed to convince yourself that's a good relationship, but it's not. But whatever. Oats. I'm sure he has better. I'm sure he's great in other areas, but this one glaring giant issue is... A big glaring giant issue. That's something you guys should talk about. It tastes like vanilla and cinnamon with the berries. It's awesome. so good. Awesome. These were in the checkout aisle. I've never had them before. It says they're vegan, gluten free. Peanut Why? butter. Does chocolate. that matter, dude? Like you just I just literally saw you eating chicken tenders. Why does it matter if they're vegan and gluten free? Like it doesn't give a fuck. Why do you care? Uh, clusters? They're they're tiny. That's like somebody saying like, oh, wow, there's straight women here when I just saw you go into the glory hole and suck five guys off. Looks like Cheerios. They just taste like crunchy dark chocolate. Cool. I don't even taste any peanut butter. I don't like these. I don't like dark chocolate really, so that's a no so for why me. Why did you buy something that's dark chocolate? Whatever, dude. I'm, I don't know. What the fuck is good with this woman? I don't care. I don't care, dude. No, if you need to change in order to appeal more people, then you should do that. If you want to be more attractive, then you should do that. I don't think that there's anything else to say than that. This person's literally hogwash brain. But anyway, uh, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate it. If you leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things, I'd appreciate it tremendously. Um, and by the way, I appreciate you tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety, um, and or you're here right now, leave it down below. Leave it down below by typing in a sun. S U N? Yeah, the sun. Here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's so beautiful to gaze up at that sun and see the beautiful rays. And make sure you wear SPF. It is very, very important. I'll have it next to me. But I do have the 50 SPF, uh, Neutrogena, I think, whatever it's called. I use that on my face every day to ensure, even if I'm not going outside, it's like raining out right now. I don't know if you guys can see how disgusting it looks outside. But to, to me, the rain is very, very beautiful. I love the sensation of the rain touching my skin, feeling that lubrification across my body, really embracing the the nature's lubrification. It's, it's awesome. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I think more people should embrace it. Um, I know that you have no problem embracing nature's delights and touching grass every once in a while, and I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome to, like, go outside and, and embrace nature and see what's going on out there. Not everything needs to be concrete and, I don't know, depression. It could be other things, too, like green stuff and bark. So that's really awesome. And whether that bark be from a tree or a dog, I think it's amazing. I love you. I think you're an amazing person. I'm happy that you're um, becoming a better person daily. I'm happy that you're drinking that water right now. By the way, if you're not drinking water, do it. Drink the water. Put it in your mouth. Suck it off. Um, I love that for you. Thank you so much. Uh, Anyway, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.